and I think this might be a little bit of a surprise to a lot of you as well. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be doing the Premier League predictions for 2021. 2022. The season's finally here. I mean, it feels like it was just yesterday that the Euros were happening and I couldn't be happier that the Premier League is starting this weekend. So without further ado, let's start out with the number one team. Who's going to win the Premier League this season? So for me, it's a really tough call. And to be honest, I bounce around with two or three different teams. Uh, the team that I think is going to win it though, and by a fine margin, I, and, and really a fine margin, I think this is going to be a year where maybe low 90s, high 80s and points wins the season and it might come down to the last couple weeks. But the team that I think that will win is this year's European champions, that's right, Chelsea. I think Chelsea is going to go ahead and take the Premier League this season. And let me give you a couple reasons why. So I've kind of broken down all of these teams into three categories, strengths, transfers, and weaknesses. And the strength for Chelsea is obviously the way that they play under Tuchel. Since he's come in, they're a lot more organized. They're really well defensively drilled and they are really good on the counter attack. They're good in possession. They have a lot of the ball and they're about to land right now as we're filming this video. I think it's just confirmed I haven't gotten the here you go yet, but I think it's just confirmed. Romelu Lukaku will be coming back to Chelsea from Inter Milan. And if they can sign him, that's the striker they need. That's the final piece, I think. And I think having that striker like Romelu Lukaku will take them to the next level. And I mean, they already beat Man City for the Champions League last year and finished the season strong after Tuchel took over and finished in fourth place. So I think this will be their year. They got rid of Kyle Tomori on a permanent deal to AC Milan which shouldn't necessarily hurt them. Uh, I would have loved to see Tuchel give him a more of a chance. He was really good with Milan last season on loan, but it, it seems like that's just gonna be best for him. So good for him to get a permanent deal. And other than that, Chelsea hasn't really done much. They've kind of stayed stagnant this year and haven't made too many moves. So hopefully the addition of Lukaku is gonna be good enough for them. We'll see. And now as far as weaknesses go, the way that they play is kind of a slow style of possession sometimes. It's not necessarily possession with a purpose, and we'll see if that ends up changing. I'd like to see them change that a little bit and maybe try to put a little bit more pressure on the ball when they're not in possession and try to win the ball back high up the field. I think both of those things, especially with Lukaku up front, will, will be paying huge dividends, I think, for them, and I think will be the final piece to get them over the line and win the title this season. But like I said, it's gonna be really close. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if any one of these other two teams that I'm gonna mention here really give it a run and win the title this season. So next up, who's gonna finish just behind Chelsea this next season? And that's gonna be last year's champions, Manchester City. And this one was close. I, I really think Man City is, is, is really, really solid. Obviously, last season winning the title and not really losing many pieces and adding somebody like Jack Grealish for $100 million or 100 million pounds over that in dollars. I think it's about $139 million breaking their transfer fee pretty much everywhere up and down the pitch. They have quality players, top quality players, and they have extremely good depth. I mean, nobody in Europe probably has as good a depth as Manchester City does. So I think, you know, top to bottom, they're fantastic. And that's really their biggest strength. And, you know, in addition to that, being coached by somebody like Pep Guardiola and the things that his style of play brings to the table, they're gonna be dominant in possession. They're gonna be the dominant team on the pitch almost nine times out of 10, almost every time they take the pitch, they're gonna be the ones in charge. And I think that's their biggest strength, to be honest. Transfer business is kind of an iffy one right now, because obviously you have the huge addition of Jack Grealish, like I just mentioned but you also have the potential of bringing in Harry Kane and that deal has not been completed yet. It's still Tottenham holding out for a bigger price, but if they can land Kane, that will be a huge, huge move for Manchester City because by a lot of accounts, that's really what they need right now. They need that final piece. They need a striker similar to Chelsea. They need somebody who can get you 20 to 30 goals every single season and that's something Harry Kane has proven he's been able to do over the course of his career in the Premier League. It kind of leads to their weakness, which we'll get into in a second. But to finish out transfer business, they lose Sergio Aguero, obviously. But to be honest, I don't know if that's gonna have a huge impact because he only chipped in four goals last season. He only played a handful of games. 
Looks like he only played 12 games last season in the Premier League. So it's not gonna be necessarily a huge miss compared to what they had last season. Now I don't wanna sound crazy and say that losing Sergio Aguero is not gonna make a difference because he is probably one of the best players that Manchester City's ever had. I mean, and roll the clip of Aguero. Aguero! One of the best moments they've had or ever had in their history. But I will say adding somebody like Harry Kane on top of what they had last season will just be a huge factor and them being able to compete for the title, I think. And other than that, they've stayed pretty strong. They haven't lost anybody in the transfer market. So I think overall, they're gonna be really well positioned for next season. So heading into their weaknesses, what is a weakness for a team that basically blew through the Premier League the last half of the season? But if they don't get somebody like Harry Kane in and you have to rely on either that false nine position for longer than they did last season, or you rely on somebody like Gabriel Jesus to play more minutes, either way, I don't think they're gonna be able to score as many goals as they're going to need to to compete with somebody like Chelsea, which their attacking talent is just so rich and they have a ton of goals in that team. I mean, ironically, last season, their, their leader was also not very prolific. Jorginho with just seven goals, most of those off of penalties, but that's another story. So to round out Manchester City, I think that if they can get that top goal scorer or find a way, if Pep can make some tweaks to find a way to get more goal scoring besides the midfield, I think they're gonna have a realistic shot and I wouldn't be surprised to see them repeat as champions this season. It's just a matter of if those things can get closed out. Okay, and moving on to the third and final team that I think is gonna seriously compete for the Premier League title this season, and that's the other Manchester club. That's right, Manchester United will be improving on their performance last season. And I say that, I know they finished second, but I say improving on their performance, not necessarily in the way they finished in the table, but I think their biggest strengths are that they are really, really solid, really well-rounded, another team with fantastic depth and fantastic talent all the way across their starting 11. They might have the best starting 11 in all of the Premier League, to be honest, and that a big part has to do with their additions of Jadon Sancho and Rafael Varane in the transfer market. They haven't really done much other than that. They spent a ton of money on those two players, got a pretty good deal with both of those players coming in, but they really didn't do much business other than that. And I don't know if that's necessarily gonna hurt them. I think they have a really good team overall, but I think their biggest weakness and what they didn't add up to this point in the transfer market, the last thing that they are lacking in the market and that leads me to their biggest weakness is I think not having somebody like an N'Golo Conte or Wilfred Ndidi, somebody who's really solid in defense and midfield, somebody who can hold up the play in that middle of the park, can sweep up a little bit in front of the back line. That kind of player that can break up play is what they really need and they haven't added that player up till now. And so right now they're still relying on the midfield partnership of McTominay and Fred and we'll see how that works out. It didn't work out fantastically well last season. They had a good season, but they're still really needing that last piece in the midfield, a defensive-minded midfielder, somebody who's gonna be able to give them something that they don't have that can push players like Paul Pogba up the pitch a little bit more and get him more involved in the attacking and creative aspects of the game. So if they can land that player, I think they're really gonna be positioned to be in that title hunt. But as of right now, I think they're gonna be just below the tier of Manchester City and Chelsea. Okay, now moving on to the fourth team and our last team in the Champions League places. And this is a team that I really, I went back and forth on between two teams, those being Leicester and Liverpool. And I finally landed on Liverpool. And they could honestly compete for the title this season. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think they're gonna finish just short, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them in third or fourth place this season. And it has a lot to do with their, their strength and talent and their depth. And they're really not losing much from a couple seasons ago when they did win the title by, I mean, it was they're ahead by 25 points. And basically I think it was February or March. So. so now moving on to transfers. Transfers is actually kind of mixed bag for me because you have, Somebody like Ibrahima Konate coming in, a pretty good buy, he was a great talent, didn't play a lot last season due to injury at RB Leipzig, but coming in, another great piece to put in that center back position to either challenge players like Joe Gomez and Joel Matip, or to just be there and be somebody you can rely on if they have some of the injury woes that they did last season. I think that's a great buy for only $36 million. And on the other side of that though, you have somebody like Jeannie Wijnaldum who leaves on a free. And I think that the loss of Jeannie Wijnaldum is potentially gonna be a big problem. 
they don't have somebody like Jeannie Wijnaldum in the team right now that can do those similar sorts of things. A little bit more of an attack-minded, offensive type of midfielder in that solid midfield three that they usually use. But that could give more opportunities to players like Thiago, who's not necessarily the same player but didn't play a ton last season because of the depth in midfield, and somebody like Curtis Jones, who had a good portion of the season that he made some cameo appearances, a couple starts, and he started to kind of make that ascendancy to being a really top quality midfielder in the Premier League. And I think that, you know, at his young age, adding more minutes, potentially giving him more starts this season, I think could see him progress to a really high level. And maybe he is kind of the answer to Jeannie Wijnaldum. Honestly, their weaknesses, they don't really have very many. Their biggest weakness that people have pointed to in the past is just the fact that their midfield hasn't contributed to their goal scoring as much as a forward line has. People think that, you know, they rely on a little bit too much of that forward line to contribute goals. And to some degree, that's true. They still don't have a ton of depth in that position. They lost Diva Karigi. Very false. It's so false. He's very bad. They didn't really add anybody in attack. So we'll see. That could hurt them. That could come back to bite them, not adding another player in attack. But as far as that goes, as far as the overall picture of Liverpool goes, I think they're still in really good position and they still don't have very many weaknesses. Okay, now in fifth place. Now, if we look at the transfers, for Leicester City. They were one of the best teams in the market this season, continue to be one of the best teams in the market in all of Europe. And they made two really key signings and actually a third, it looks like, as the time of recording, it looks like they're gonna be adding Yannick Vestergaard from Southampton to kind of replace Wesley Fofana, who unfortunately sustained a pretty serious injury in the first game of the season and he will not be able to play for at least a couple weeks, probably a couple months by the timetable. So if we look at their transfers as a whole, they added three really big pieces, one being Vestigard, one being Pats and Daka from RB Salzburg, kind of a similar JDB Vardy type player. A lot of people have compared him to a player that likes to play off the line and get in behind and can provide a lot of goals. He was the leading goal scorer last season in the Austrian Bundesliga. And another player playing from a champion in Europe, and that is Bubakari Samare coming from Lille, who was the champions of the Ligue 1 last season. And he's gonna be able to be a player who kind of contributes in that midfield, kind of adding a similar dynamic to your Tielemans and giving some rest to players and making that midfield a little bit deeper. And then they also add Ryan Bertrand on a free from Southampton, giving more depth in that left back position. So now if we move on to the weaknesses and the biggest glaring weakness for Leicester is obviously their ability to close out the season. The past two seasons, they've had the most time spent in the top four and haven't actually finished in any of the top four positions over the past two seasons, finishing in fifth place both times. If they can close out the season on a high note and be able to get into that Champions League place, I think this will be a fantastic season for them. And I think that's really one of the only things that they have to look upon. And you know, in the past, it's been some injuries. They've had players like Jamie, Mad Jamie Vardy and James Madison, who have been out for extended amounts of time. And obviously you have somebody like Wesley Fofana who's gonna be out for a while this season. So that might come back to bite them. That might be a hindrance to their season again, but we'll see. I think if Brendan Rodgers and their team can close out the season strong, they're gonna be in a really good position to have one of those final four Champions League places. So now if we move into our sixth place, we're gonna start moving through these teams a little bit quicker. And the next team that I think will be there, the sixth place team, it was kind of a toss up to me, to be honest. And it's a team that I think can go, you know, really high in the table or possibly have a really tough season. And that's Tottenham Hotspur. They have a really solid squad. They have, I think, an improvement at head coach coming in. Uh, Jose Mourinho leaves and Nuno Espirito Santo from Wolves comes in and replaces him. And I think if they can play a similar style of football or at least play up to the level that a lot of Nuno's teams at Wolves did play up to the past couple seasons, I think they're going to be a really good team because they have a lot of talent up and down the pitch. Um, and then obviously looking at their transfers and looking at a position of need in the past, adding somebody like Christian Romero from Atalanta, the Serie A defender of the year last season at center back to give more solidity in that position, which was a position that they really struggled in last season, whether they played somebody like Davinson Sanchez or Eric Dyer or Toby Oliverald, who has since moved on. 
they really didn't have that number one defender at the back last season like they've had in the past. So I think adding Christian Romero is going to turn that around and have somebody in the back to rely on. And I would be remiss if I talked about Spurs and didn't mention Harry Kane. So obviously Harry Kane being the biggest part of the puzzle in the transfer window this season. Are they going to lose them? Are they going to keep them? And I think regardless if they do, it's still going to play a big part in their success this season. If they can't add somebody, supplement that roster with some of that money, and I don't think they should go out and spend it all, but I think they should add a top quality striker, somebody close to the level of Harry Kane. They didn't always play up to the level that they could uh, with Jose Mourinho, and honestly their biggest weakness last season was just holding onto leads. I don't have the stat in front of me, but it was something like 11 or 12 games last season they ended up being in the lead at halftime and losing or drawing those games. So. Holding onto leads is gonna be a huge deal, and I think adding somebody like Christian Romero and adding a new coach like Nuno Espirito Santo is gonna play a big positive influence in that, in my opinion. My gut feeling is they're gonna have a better season this season, and they're gonna be finishing in one of those European places. Okay, now in seventh place, finishing just out of the European places, and this might surprise a lot of you, but I think it's gonna be Leeds United. I think that they had a great season last season. Now, I think that they're going to be able to improve on that. I think that having another year in the Prem under Bielsa and having another year of maturity and growth with those players in the system will just take them on to better things. Now, there's obviously always the possibility that there could be some burnout with this team. That's something that's been thrown at them in the past and necessarily hasn't played out, especially last season. They ended up finishing the season really strong. So if they can consistently play with that style of football throughout the season, I think they're gonna be really good. And like I see, like I said here, I think they're gonna be finishing in or close to those European places. So if we look now at the eighth team in the table, this is where things start to get a little bit more jumbled up in my opinion. It really could have been one of three or four teams that finish in this eighth place. And I think this might be a little bit of a surprise to a lot of you as well. A team who had a really good season last season finished in sixth place and we're talking about West Ham. Uh, and if we talk about their transfer window, most notably not adding anybody in attack and not being able to hold on to Jesse Lingard at the moment, it looks like him coming in and adding, I believe it was 10 goals last season in a half season on loan. He was one of their best attacking players last season and not having him is gonna be a huge burden for them because really other than that, they had Mikel Antonio who had I think 10 or 11 goals and not many options other than those two. So I think that's gonna be their biggest weakness is just finding goals. And I think that's gonna be part of the reason why they drop so much in the table is not having those players to rely on. David Moyes likes to stress defensive structure and they have players in defense that are really strong, uh, like Declan Rice being obviously the biggest one in defensive midfield position, one of the best defensive midfielders in all the Premier League. It's gonna be really tough for them to hold on to him, but if they do, he's obviously the rock back there and I think he's kind of the leader as far as that goes. But overall, defensively, they're really strong, and I think that's gonna be their strength this season. And if they can put that together with more goals, with more attacking flair somewhere, I'm not sure where that's gonna come from, but if they do that, I could see them finishing higher than ninth, but I don't see that. Okay, so ninth place now is going to be Aston Villa. Now you might think that's crazy because they just lost their best player in Jack Grealish. And what are you gonna do when you have somebody like Jack Grealish who is so key in everything they did in a sense of attack and even though just progressing the ball up the pitch and in a leadership role as well by a lot of accounts. He was one of the biggest leaders at the club. So losing a player like that, I mean, if we just jump straight to their weaknesses, I think that's gonna be it. Gonna be have something they're gonna have to work through and, and we'll have to see with the couple additions that they did make if that's something they can do. But if we talk about those additions, I think that's one of their biggest strengths. They might be more well-rounded overall as a team with the additions that they made. Getting Emi Buendia from Norwich last season who had 15 goals and 15 assists and led that Norwich team to finishing first place in the championship. Uh, he's gonna be a huge addition, not exactly the same player as Jack Grealish, but another really creative attacking player who can definitely get you into those scoring positions. And then you have somebody like Danny Ings who comes over from Southampton on kind of a strange surprise deal that nobody saw coming. Adding another option up there with somebody like Ollie Watkins, maybe playing in a two at the striker position. Uh, I think if, if they can sort that out, if Dean Smith can find the right formation to get both 
both of those players involved, I think it'll be really good for them. And I think the third addition that they're adding uh, with some of that Jack Grealish spending money is Leon Bailey coming over from Leverkusen. Uh, I believe he had nine goals and four assists last season for Leverkusen from a winger position. And that will give them another option in attack with that position kind of being one of their slimmest uh, positions on the team, not having a ton of depth. And I think adding somebody like him will not only give them another element, give them some more depth, but I think give them uh, some more talent. I think that takes them to another level because Leon Bailey was one of the best link wingers in all the Bundesliga last season. Okay, so now our 10th place squad. And this is another tough one. Honestly, it, it was between two or three teams who I thought was gonna finish in 10th place. And I'm gonna put my money on Everton. Now that might seem a little bit crazy because they just lost Carlo Ancelotti. They had an up and down season last season, starting the season off really hot and then tapering off and finishing uh, lower than they really should in the table at 11th place. And so what makes me think that they're gonna finish higher than that? Well, it's kind of just the teams around them, to be honest. Their strengths are obviously, they have a lot of good attacking players, players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's made a big step up last season, and Richarlison still continues to be one of the best attacking players in the Premier League. And they have good pieces up and down the pitch uh, all around. Unfortunately, they're mostly kind of a mid-table squad. They don't have very many players that you look at and say would be probably be playing for top six clubs. And that's not always a problem. Sometimes you can have teams that aren't full of top six players, you know, look at somebody like Leeds, but come together with a really good system. And I'm not sure that's gonna happen. You know, they lose Ancelotti, they bring in Rafa Benitez, who's kind of been out in coaching for a little bit. They coached in China a couple years ago, and I believe didn't have a club last season. So we'll see if, Rafa Benitez can bring them back to the top of the table, top closer to those European places, but I just don't see it, which is why I see them finishing in an average position somewhere around 10th place. Let's look at 11th place. I think that's gonna be Arsenal. I think Arsenal has the potential to finish higher, but there's just so much uncertainty across that team. I mean, who knows what they're gonna line up every week with Mikel Arteta. He likes to change tactics. They don't necessarily have the strongest roster. I like the addition of Ben White, but I don't think that's gonna be enough to carry them over and finish in one of those European places. Could finish in the top 10, but I just don't see it happening. Okay, so if we move to 12th in the table, and I think that's gonna be Wolves, which I believe they finished in 13th place last season. So a little bit of an improvement there, but still I don't see them being somebody who's gonna challenge for those European places or really make that much progress. I really like Nuno Espirito Santo. Uh, I don't know a ton about Bruno Lage. comes in from Benfica to replace Nuno. Didn't add very much in the transfer window. Have places that they could strengthen and really haven't. I think 12th is probably gonna be right around where they finish this season. So if we look at 13th place now, I think that's gonna be Southampton. Similar to Everton, I think that they have a lot of things that are positive about them. Uh, I like Ralph, Ralph Hasenhutl as a coach. I like the aggression and intensity that he plays with, but they didn't add a lot in the transfer window. They lost players like Yannick Vestergaard, who is one of their top center backs, one of their key leaders, and there's the potential that they could also lose their captain, James Ward-Prowse, who's really the only player that you look on the team and say he's you know, a top six quality player. Uh, and obviously, like we talked about with Aston Villa, losing Danny Ings to Aston Villa is going to hurt in their goal scoring, which they didn't score a lot last season to begin with. They were kind of mid-table in most goal scoring metrics and losing their best goal scorer is not gonna help. So I think the 13th place is gonna be about where they finish. So I think 14th place might surprise a lot of people. That's gonna be the bees of Brentford coming up from the championship last season. I think they're gonna comfortably avoid the drop uh, that could come back to haunt me, we'll see. But I think they're gonna comfortably avoid the drop and I think they're gonna finish as high as 14th. Uh, the other teams behind them, I think, you know, they have more experience in the Premier League. They have some better players, kind of more overall quality in their squad, but I don't think any of them are as good as Brentford can be on their day. If Brentford can play up to their level with Thomas Frank and they're kind of more aggressive, pressing style of football that they like to play, if they can play up to their standards like they did in the championship last season, they're gonna be really good. And I think that there's a shot that Ivan Tony 
can score 15 to 20 goals in the Premier League, Premier League this season. He was the leading goal scorer last season in the championship with 31 goals and 10 assists. So if there's a big season out of him, I think Brentford can have a big season as well. So next in the table, we have Brighton finishing at 15th place. I think Brighton's one of those teams that could finish higher, they could finish lower, but like a lot of his teams, they didn't add a lot in the off season. They didn't add another goal scorer, which I think they desperately needed. Uh, they lost Ben White, who was one of their best center backs to Arsenal. So overall, I just don't think they did enough to improve. And I think they're gonna avoid relegation, but I don't think they're gonna finish very high in the table. 15th kind of feels where they should live. Now, 16th place, I'm talking about Crystal Palace. And this is a team that I think could honestly get relegated this season. Sorry, Palace fans, but you know, having somebody like Eberichi Eze out for the majority of this first half of the season with an Achilles injury and not having a ton of attacking dynamism other than that could be something that really hurts them. Patrick Vieira coming in being a new coach after four pretty solid years under Roy Hodgson. I believe that they finished with their highest points total in the Premier League under Roy Hodgson. So losing him could be a, a factor in them climbing the table and them staying in the Premier League. We'll see if Patrick Vieira can impress, then they could do pretty well, but I think they're gonna finish right around the relegation zone. I think 16th is probably pretty fair with some of the talent they still have on the team like Wilfred Zaha and others. I just don't see a ton out of this team though, unfortunately. So I think 16th is where they're gonna live. So now looking at 17th place, the last team that I think is gonna avoid the drop. And this one might come as a surprise to a lot of you as well. And that's Norwich City. I think the championship winners last season coming up for their second stint in a couple of years in the Premier League. Similarly to Brentford, I think they have a really good style of football. And if they can learn from their mistakes last season, they got into a lot of clashes of, you know, three, four, five goal matches where they weren't able to, you know, get quite up to that same level and fell short to a lot of the top teams. If they can learn from that a little bit, play a little bit more defensively while still keeping those same attacking fundamentals, I think they could be really good this season. So they're gonna have to get over the losses of Emi Buendia, but they did make a lot of pretty good signings. They added Josh Sargent, they added Milo Rashica both from Werder Bremen, and I think those are pretty good signings. Maybe not enough to fill the shoes of Emi Buendia, but I think overall they're gonna be doing just enough to avoid the drop. So now if we look at 18th place in the first team I think is gonna get relegated, that's Burnley in submission. I just don't think they're good enough. They didn't add really anybody in the off season. They're already lacking in the attacking department, and you know, they're defensively really strong and that's something you're always gonna get out of Burnley. But I mean, when is that gonna come back and haunt them that they can't really score that many goals? And I mean, if we look at the stats last season, they conceded the six most goals and only scored 32 goals themselves. So if you don't add attacking talent, how are you gonna reverse that and get better in that department? I just don't see it. I don't think they will. I think they're going down. 19th place, Newcastle. Strengths, Allen St. Maximin's really fun to watch. Transfers, I hope they can sign Joe Willock. Weaknesses, they're really bad. And now in last place, it pains me to say this, uh, I think Watford will be going down. I think they're a better team than they were last time there in the Premier League. I really like Esmeralda Asar. I think he's gonna be really a bright spot for them this season, but unfortunately, I just don't see much on the team other than him that will be able to kind of compete with the top end of the table and really even the top kind of relegation candidate candidates. And I will say it would not necessarily shock me to see them avoid the drop with some of the other teams around them that just don't have enough in attack and aren't necessarily gonna be able to score as many goals. I think Watford could potentially do so with Eshmili Asar and adding somebody like Josh King, if he can get back to kind of the form he was a couple years ago at Bournemouth, they could be a decent team. But unfortunately, I think Watford will be making the drop this season. So that's all 20 teams. I feel pretty confident in my list. There's a couple in there that might really come back to bite me. But what do you guys think? Did you like the list? What are your kind of opinions? Who do you think will be getting relegated? Who do you think will win the championship this season? Uh, I don't know, I'd really like to hear your opinions. But other than that, I'm really excited for the Premier League to start this weekend. It's probably my favorite league. I mean, I really enjoy MLS as an American, but there's just something special about the Premier League. And 
I'm just really excited to watch it. So if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, leave a comment if you'd like to. Tell me your favorite teams. Tell me who you think is going to win the championship this season. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.